across the UK, online and on DAB. Talk Radio. We have ways of making you talk. Mid mornings with Julia Hartley Brewer, the Fleet Street firebrand who isn't afraid to shoot from the lip. From the front page to the front bench and the front line. Welcome to the kingdom of Julia Hartley Brewer on Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. Good afternoon, she is at eight minutes past midday. This is Talk Radio. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer. Final hour of my show before John Holmes comes in at a one to take you through the afternoon. Uh, just that update on that breaking news you heard from Rachel Jewell in the last few minutes. Uh, the government has announced that uh, there will be a renovation bill for Buckingham Palace over the next 10 years of £369 million. Government funding for the royal family will almost double to fund that bill. Which is weird, because last time I looked, the Queen was a very rich lady. But to be fair, uh, Buckingham Palace is used for state vacations and it is by all accounts in terrible, terrible nick. And uh, think about uh, buildings like that, they cost an awful lot uh, to renovate, even to a pretty basic level. So £369 million of your and my hard-earned taxpayers' money going on a refurbishment programme for Buckingham Palace. To be fair, quite a lot less than the many billions that are going to be spent on the Palace of Westminster where MPs sit. But uh, always welcome your thoughts on that. Uh, 0344 499 1000 if you want to give us a call. Uh, coming up, we are going to be talking to our Friday panel. I'll rake it up panel uh, reviewing the week's news and what a week of news it's been we'll be joined by the journalist and men's issues campaigner martin daubley and the founder and director of operation black vote simon woolley uh, join me in the studio in just a couple of moments first up though an issue actually very close to martin's heart international men's day uh, is tomorrow uh, we have been told haven't we by uh, some labor mps jess phillips and the like saying that every day is international men's day it's international men's day 365 days of the year but tory mp philip davies uh, in a debate in the House of Commons yesterday uh, said uh, that basically, you know, men have lost their voice uh, and need to be heard. And we need to be talking about men's issues as well as women's issues. They simply don't get discussed. Uh, let's talk now to uh, Mike Buchanan. He's from the Justice for Men and Boys Party and has been campaigning on many of these issues for a number of years. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure, Julia. Um, uh, why do you think we need a, a Men's International Day? Um, because men's issues just get so little coverage. I mean, we have 650 MPs, <clears throat> and only two of them, Julia, ever speak out on men's and boys' issues. That's Philip Davis, who, who led the debate yesterday, and Carl McCartney. And we, we've, 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 we've this morning put a link to the debate on our website. And what, one, of the, one of the shocking things was just how few... MPs there were on the government benches. I mean, I think at times there were maybe six out of, what, 300? To be fair, that's um, quite normal uh, for any debate in the House of Commons. Well, yes, but, 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 but you know, this was a debate on International Men's Day, so it concerned half the electors in the country. Um, and uh, as we explained in our 2015 General Election Manifesto, um, through its actions and inactions, the state assaults the human rights of men and boys in 20 areas, almost always to privilege women and girls. The state assaults the human rights of women and girls specifically in no areas. Now, you, uh, uh, the, the assaults start young, and, and you when and you I say, love... When you say assault, years. why? That's a very strong language. Uh, I'm sorry? Assault is a very strong language. Um, well, well, I mean, let, let, let me just take, take, take one of the 20. Um, it, it's one that we, the last time you and I spoke was, was when, when I, along with some supporters, was outside the Tory party conference. Um, protesting about um, the circumcision of male minors yeah. or male genital mutilation. It's undoubtedly illegal in the UK, but the police and the CPS don't bring prosecutions. I mean, I mean, if, you know, if, if genital mutilation is not an assault, Julia, I don't know what is. Um, but you, know, you feel that there are other issues, and we know, that, for instance, that, that male rates of suicide are astonishingly high. Uh, the biggest killer of men under the age of 40 now is men uh, no, it, taking it's, it's their... Actually, it's, 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 it's the biggest killer jury between 15 and 49. Yeah, but yeah. And, and, and has been for many years. And yesterday, the, I mean, much of the debate was hijacked by feminists. And the feminist narrative on male suicide is that men commit suicide because they don't talk about their problems. It's absolute baloney. Men commit suicide because they have reactive depression brought on by life events that they find unbearable. Things like being denied access to their children <clears throat> after family breakdowns, uh, all, all too often because um, women make up false allegations of domestic violence and, and so on. Um, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the reason that men commit suicide, I would say, is, is because you know, life has become unbearable. The, the, the female suicide rate has halved in the space of 30 years. 
So you're saying that life is getting harder for men as life has got better for women. We've certainly seen issues concerning uh, schooling. There was concern for many years about girls not doing well enough and then the concern about ethnic minority children not doing well enough. And now the, the emphasis, uh, in, certainly in the media, whether or not it is at schools or not, has been white working class boys who are the ones who are being left behind. Uh, do you think that if it was white working class girls, there would be more pressure on, on the teaching establishment to do something about it? Of course there was. Uh, I mean, all, all this male disadvantaging is simply the reverse side of the coin, Julia, to female privileging. So if you take, uh, for example, education, um, yes, there's talk in the media and politicians talk about uh, the crisis of, uh, of, of, of boys in education, but, th but they do nothing about it. The Department for Education is not spending one penny even researching that. Um, and and so, 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 I mean, in 1987-8, in um, o levels were replaced by GCSEs with the with the with with, with the um, purpose to advantage girls over boys because it, it then allowed teachers pro girl <coughs> uh, bias to come out and the, the well, it doesn't have to be pro girl bias it is just there seems to be quite a lot of evidence that boys respond uh, more to a sort of competitive environment and teaching now has become so female dominated uh, that, that women women are going to be find, perhaps find it easier to teach girls in a certain way and that that coursework over the years I mean I, I've always preferred the competitive environment personally uh, probably got too much testosterone in my blood but but this, this is the thing it's there are different ways of learning but does this have to be against men hasn't it not just been perhaps almost an accidental I suppose um, uh, just a side effect of the promotion of women's rights that somehow along the way look I'm a feminist through and through I was raised by a you know, feminist mother and uh, you know, the, the, the idea that the, in way any way that the, the promoting women's rights as equal rights uh, should have it's just accidentally has has hurt men but it's not it's not equal rights uh, Julia I mean in, in, in all these areas it's actually privileging of women it's not, I mean, feminism has never been about equal rights. It's always been about privileging no, women. No, it hasn't. So I'm a feminist. It hasn't. It really hasn't. There, been, there, are, there, are defi there is definitely a, a, a strain of feminism. You probably and I probably use the term feminazis uh, who, who see yeah. women constantly as victims and needing extra help and positive discrimination. Look, I'm not signed up to any of that and I don't know many women who are, frankly, who are sane. Um, but in terms of just the expectation that, you know, I should be able to do the same job as a man for the same pay and the like, that, that's just about equal rights. It's nothing to do with <laughs> domineering <laughs> men. But women have had that for decade after decade, Julia. I mean, you know, there, there, there was a book uh, um, published in 1913, 103 years ago, called The Fraud of Feminism. Um, you know, even at that time, um, in fact, going back to the late Victorian era, feminism, feminism has never been about equality. It's always been about female privileging. And the female privileging um, is, is resulting in, in huge disadvantages for males. I mean, how... how how can how can privileging of women not lead to? Well, no, I'm not. To, I, to I, but I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one because I, that is not, I think, where most women who describe themselves as feminists is where they are. But, let, but let's talk more about uh, the issues about what you actually want to come out of International uh, Men's Day. What 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 you know what what can actually come out of this? Is is this just about raising more a, a awareness of, of of the of the issues? I mean, I, I mean, it's, it's quite interesting. Some of the papers today are looking at why you know why this why this does matter, and they point out. We talked about the suicide. 13 men a day uh, uh, commit suicide uh, every day in the UK. Boys underperform girls at every stage in education uh, where you know men are the main victims of both men's violence and women's violence. Dads of all backgrounds, as you mentioned, uh, often don't get to stay in their children's lives if they're separated. And the majority of people who are homeless, imprisoned and long-term unemployed are men. But we, we have just sort of ignored a lot of these issues. They haven't been ignored. They, they, they are the, the, the deliberate creations of a state, as I say, which assaults men's and boys' human rights. You know, gov the, 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 the government doesn't give a damn about all these problems. I mean, they may debate it, Julia, but, you know, you, 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 know, you say things like fathers denied access to their children. Mm. Um, you know, no, 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 nothing ever happens. Nothing ever happens because the, the, the state is there to privilege women. So if, so if a woman wants to, to deny her ex-partner access to the children, um, the, 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 the best that the, the father might, might, might uh, an ex-husband might manage is to get a contact order. But when, when, when the women frustrate them, um, there are no consequences. We, we would like to see women who, who, are, who, who frustrate contact orders 
um, um, sent to prison. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Mike. I could not be with you more on that because, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, children need fathers as much as they need mothers. We'll have to leave it there. Times Against Us, Mike Buchanan. He's from the Justice for Men and Boys Party talking about International Men's Day tomorrow. I know that one of my Friday panellists will be keen to talk about this. Martin Daubney is a journalist and men's issue campaigner. He's joined by uh, Simon Woolley, who's the founder and director of Operation Black Vote. They'll be here in just a couple of minutes to take us through the week's news. Goodness me, how do we uh, narrow down all of those stories? But we'll get Martin's take on International Men's Day first. Do stay tuned. Uh, after an update on the travel, this is Talk Radio, and we'll get to the Friday panel next. Talk Radio, 24-hour radio debate and entertainment. Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. It's the radio show where listening is highly recommended. Home Rule with Martin Roberts on Talk Radio in association with Northwood's Guaranteed Rent. Whether you're looking to own, rent or just improve a pad, get essential advice from top property expert Martin Roberts. Pick up the keys to stress-free house happiness. Home Rule, tomorrow morning from 11 on Talk Radio with Northwood's Guaranteed Rent. Our landlords get paid on time, every time, even when a property is empty. Go to northwoodsuk.com to find Find out more. Supercharge your Saturday with the latest Soccer Saturday price boost from Skybet. Man City, Liverpool and Everton all to win was 4-1, to one, now 6-1. to one. Get boosted odds on three o'clock's biggest games for new and existing customers. And with Skybet, you can cash out before the final whistle. Less 4-1, to one, more 6-1. to one. Skybet, that's betting better. Maximum bet applies, 18plusgambleaware.co.uk. Odds may be subject to change. Minimum odds and eligibility restrictions apply. When the fun stops, stop. At Wix, our 50% off selected tiles and flooring sale just got even better. There's now an extra 15% off until Tuesday. Wix, let's do it right. With the Pure Highway digital radio adapter in my car, I can be anywhere. I'm off to the pub, but I drop by Abbey Road. Past the lights, and I'm in New Orleans. At the left, I'm at net worth 96. I must book those tickets. Reminder, book. With Pure Highway, you can enjoy more great music with DAB Digital Radio and Spotify, make calls hands-free, and even connect with Siri, so you can be wherever you want, wherever you're going. Visit your nearest Halfords for a free fitting or find out more at pure.com. Spotify subscription may be required. Free fitting applies to Halfords purchases only. It's another great giveaway, hey, in this week's Sun on Sunday. Our free Merry Mary's Christmas makes your festive feast delicious. Get your Merry Mary's Christmas in the Sun on Sunday. For great ideas. Ideas, top turkey tips and perfect puds from the Queen of Cooking, get your free glossy Mary Berries Christmas magazine inside the Sun on Sunday. It's your recipe for no stress success this Christmas. Another unmissable great giveaway hey, only in this week's Sun on Sunday. I drive with Uber uh, to make extra cash for Christmas. And to fit around school hours. I'm driving with Uber to help save towards my deposit. And actually, I get to be my own boss. Just some of the reasons why people all over the UK love driving with Uber. Even if you don't have your own car, we'll help you get started with a free ignition info session. Get started through ignition and you'll even get an extra £300 after you've completed 20 trips. Sign up today at godriveuber.co.uk. T's and C's and private hire licence fees may apply. Talk radio, traffic and travel. We'll do a channel on the M1 northbound through Bedfordshire. It's uh, queuing traffic due to a broken down vehicle, which has been shifted. That's going northbound on the M1 just after Junction 10 with congestion back onto the M1 at Junction 9. The M6 southbound at Greater Manchester, one lane's closed off on the M6 south from 26 down to Junction 25 due to an accident. Reports of one lane blocked as well through Lancashire on the M6 southbound between Junction 34 and Junction 33. In the M5 southbound through Worcestershire, the exit slip road, Junction 4, we do have a vehicle fire blocking one lane. Whiskey, how do you have yours? On the rocks, on the sofa, by a roaring fire, with your feet up, at an office party, at a family party, a glass for granddad, a glass for Santa, a glass for you. This Christmas, Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey is just £18 at your local co-op. 70CL participating stores only subject to availability end 6th of December 18 plus. Please drink responsibly. Drinkaware.co.uk Across the UK, online and on DAB. Saturday Breakfast with Penny Smith on Talk Radio. I'm Penny Smith. Join me tomorrow morning from 8 on Talk Radio for the perfect weekend breakfast. I'm going to be reviewing the papers, taking a look at all the best new film, book and theatre releases and I'm going to be chatting to a whole host of celebrity guests live in the studio. Saturday breakfast with Penny Smith. Tomorrow morning from 8. On Talk Radio, we'll get you talking. 
Across the UK, online and on DAB. Mid mornings with Julia Hartley Brewer. On Talk Radio, we'll get you talking. Good afternoon, Julia. It's at 1222. This is uh, Talk Radio. I'm Julia Hartley Brew. We're heading toward the weekend. Vote John Holmes here at one o'clock to take you through the afternoon. First up, though, delighted to welcome my Friday panel uh, Martin Dorgney, journalist and men's issue campaigner, and Simon Woolley, uh, founder and director of Operation Black Vote. Uh, good afternoon to you, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Um, uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I have to say, I did just say, I did just say to my newsroom, I think we've got the most, this, with no disrespect to previous Friday panels, <laughs> our most handsome. Friday panel. I think we need to get a photograph uh, in these chaps. <laughs> Flat in three here. will get you everywhere, Absolutely. darling. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, 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 that, it's that and the coffee that's all we pay you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Martin and Simon, actually, I'd like to bring you in but it's just briefly, actually, on the conversation mm. we've just been having with Mike Buchanan from the Justice for Men and Boys Party about International Men's Day. Now, I know this is an issue close to your heart, Martin, isn't it? It's something you've been campaigning on a long time about the issues that are affecting men uniquely and, and have been ignored. But uh, do, do you agree with Mike Buchanan? It's all a conspiracy? No, I don't. Um, I'm an ambassador for International Men's Day, and um, this week in Parliament I launched the Men and Boys Coalition, which is a collective of 50 um, leading charities, academics, journalists, um, who, who are directly lobbying in, in Parliament to get laws changed. And I, I, I feel much more hopeful than Mike, actually. Um, we, we have a Prime Minister you know, in Theresa May who has directly addressed the needs of white working class boys, you know, boys like me, you know, I'm a coal miner's son, I've, you know, we'll talk later on about, about the treadmill society being stuck where we are in life, 11% of working class kids made it into journalism, I'm one of them, so there is a way through this, and, and I think there is political will, you know, to tackle this, because it is an, an inequality, if we just let ourselves look beyond gender, race, uh, you know, where are all the neediest people and let's help them. I, I'm very hopeful actually that, that we are going to look at soon a, a policy to specifically address the gender education gap, which I think is the biggest yeah. issue facing us. Uh, uh, yeah, well, certainly for me a very big issue is how few men we have I in schools. Uh, yeah. Simon mm -hmm. Woolley, um, as founder and director of Operation Black, but you know, you've been looking at uh, you know, the issues that are, that are affecting uh, young, you young know, black, black people who That's are right. not getting involved, but, but again, um, young black men are, you know, they're, they're probably some of the most disadvantaged. There, there, there are, I mean, there's lots of stereotypes mm -hmm. Uh, views, negative views towards them and they're disenfranchised and deeply affected by it. So we do need, I think as you suggested, a nuanced narrative mm. that, 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 that recognises that recognises uh, those gaps mm. uh, and actually seeks to make all our citizens effective uh, with a sense of belonging mm. and which everybody benefits. Well, what do you, what do you make, chaps, of the, uh, the reaction of some MPs like the Labour MP, Jess Phillips, a uh, woman who, who I've actually got a lot of time for. She speaks her mind and I like that. She's always getting herself into trouble. Mm. But this sort of laughing about it. There was, there was a debate last year where which she, they were talking about the male rates of suicide and International mm. Men's Day and she was laughing well, openly in the House of Commons. It was disingenuous uh, and it does her no credit. And the debate, of course, because as we've outlined, there's many issues involving mm. men, race, uh, class, and we need to we need to confront them and we need to address the issues head on. Mm. I'm actually much more kind of glass half full about about Jess's approach last year. It actually proved to be the most positive thing in terms Got of coverage. getting the day issue. Yeah, yeah, getting a coverage of all of them because you know to mock and ridicule any issue, any inequality. I, I think as you cr correctly say there, mm. you know, it kind of undermines the the bigotry of of those casting dispersions. And it turned out, frankly, to be to be really powerfully useful yep. because if you're laughing at suicide, if you're laughing at depression and education under attainment, then actually that says that we should be facing this and tackling it, you know, together. I mean, that's true, but let's not encourage it. Let's no, no, exactly. exactly. Well, <laughs> yeah. let's, uh, talking of that's true, but let's not encourage it. Let's talk about another topic that's been in the news. Uh, still this week, a, a week and a half on, uh, Donald Trump's yeah. uh, uh, presidency, well, president-elect. Uh, uh, he's uh, It's an extraordinary story. It's the gift that keeps on giving. I think for another four years as a journalist, as a human being, it, it's still a story that horrifies me. But, but Simon... Um, mm. In terms of what we've had announced from Donald Trump in the last week, we, of course, we had, you know, Nigel Farage having his meeting with him. We've had the meeting in the last 24 hours with the Japanese uh, uh, prime minister. Uh, but we also had, crucially, the appointments of a number of uh, key members of his uh, White House transition team, key White House staff, uh, in particular, uh, the appointment of Steve Bannon, the Bright, uh, Breitbart website boss, the Trump campaign chief executive. Uh, he has uh, been appointed to uh, as chief strategist yeah. uh, to the president-elect. And he's a man who has been... Well, he accused he's not just of racism, but, but he's, he's a white supremacist. He's got some form. He's got some form. That's a really nice way of putting uh, it. Not, uh, not, least, not least with those who support him, like the Ku Klux Klan and other 
uh, really uh, wretched white supremacists who see him as their white knight. I mean, look, we, we've all tried to unpick this election and there are many factors involved in it. And clearly, when you're campaigning, some wretched things were said, but people hoped, people still hope, that once Trump's in the White House, things will change. And yet, when you see the appointments of Bannon and of Giuliani, I mean, Giuliani and Bannon have so rubbished the Black Lives Matter movement, mm. you know, which is the civil rights movement of the day. Yes, so then, yes, then it became Blue Lives Matter for cops and things. Like that. Again, it does seem strange that the, pointing, the, the point was not that white lives don't matter. Correct. The argument was that young black men were the people getting shot by the police in, in, in outrageous numbers, even with their hands in the air. Disproportionately not mattering. It, and, that was, yeah. and that was the focus. And then for that to be rubbished, and now these people are running the country. I mean, you know, you just your heart sinks, Julia. And uh, I know that uh, my good friend, Reverend Al Sharpton, uh, will protest and I think he'll draw hundreds of thousands to the street because mm. people do want to make a statement. Well, but this thing of the protests, I, I've been quite thrown by these, Martin, because I, yeah. I, I would not have wanted uh, Donald Trump to be elected uh, president. I'm absolutely appalled that people have said, well, yeah, I know he said all these horrible things about Mexicans and Muslims and, and blacks and women, but, but, you know, I think at that point there is no space for a but. I'm not quite sure uh, how you can actually get to that point, but people have voted for him. How can people protest against someone who's, he's not, he's not there's no military coup. He, he's democratically elected. I think we, we live in a time where the liberal left are the worst losers in all of political history. Whether it's Remain you know, or... Yeah, I yeah. mean, we saw it with Brexit. We're seeing it again with Trump. You know, democracy has been passed. You know, we, we, we have every right to disagree with that. But for goodness sake, but let's on, get on with the country. Uh, hang now, on, now, hang now, on, Martin. Hang on, Martin. One second. You said that, that, you know, those losers, you know, the worst losers. Look, in a democracy, you're entitled to protest. You are. And if you're saying, look, this president doesn't govern in my name, in the name of bigotry, then surely that's democracy at work. I'm, no, I'm, I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. I don't think you can say after someone stood for election, this person isn't my president, when when they have been elected with the majority of the well, electoral uh, college. Clearly is their president. Clearly is their president. Yeah. But, what it, but what they're saying... You can object to the policies, you can object to his what, viewpoints. What they're yeah. saying is, is his bigotry doesn't reflect our views, yeah. and they seek to protest on that platform. I think part of the problem with this whole election was this kind of identity politicking, you know, uh, sort of labelling people as, as racist, labelling people as kind of white supremacists, you know, spectacularly backfired. And I think, you know, Steve Bannon, for, for people who, you know, criticise mm. him, he and his Breitbart news organ, you know, got it right. They, they, they chose, uh, they yeah. tapped into this kind of discontent, this, this malaise that's at the heart of American society. My sister lives in Texas. She's married to a Mexican guy. They both voted Trump. Of you know, course, she's, she's a woman. He's Mexican. Well, why? He, yeah. He's a misogynist. He's a racist. Except they actually cared more about their health insurance going through the roof because of Obamacare. Actually, the things that the media were obsessed by didn't really well, engage the populace. OK, well, we'll have to leave it there because it's uh, time is at 12.30 on that subject. So many more topics to talk about, including uh, chaos in our prisons after that uh, walkout by prison officers. Uh, and we'll also talk about that uh, race and equalities report uh, produced by David Lammy. And, of course, that social mobility report from Alan Milburn and oh yes children spending too much time in front of screens so much to talk about with our Friday panel they'll be back with me after an update on the headlines uh, coming up uh, here uh, at uh, Talk Radio with Rachel Jewell Delaney live at Drive on Talk Radio we'll get you talking it's an A to Z of original afternoon entertainment with the most well connected man in radio give it some lip big opinions massive guests all the top stories original afternoon entertainment with me Sam Delaney Delaney live at Drive Hulk in your Delaney tomorrow afternoon from 4 on Talk Radio we'll get you talking Talk Radio it's been revealed the cost of renovating Buckingham Palace is £369 million. Funding for the royal family will almost double for the next 10 years to fund an urgent overhaul of the building. It's reported the Queen may have to temporarily move out following decades of neglect. Also breaking news this hour, the Supreme Court has announced the Scottish and Welsh governments can intervene in a battle over how the Brexit process should be formally triggered. The UK government is appealing against a High Court ruling that Theresa May must seek MPs' approval. 
The government's denied that the investigation in, set up to histo investigate historical child sex abuse in England and Wales is in crisis. A group representing 600 victims is no longer taking part, calling it a stitch-up. Peter Saunders founded the National Association for People Abused in Childhood and is involved in the inquiry. I don't recognise the, the negative descriptions that have been attributed to the inquiry uh, and I have to say there are certain people out there, individuals out in society who most definitely want this inquiry to fail. Transport for London says it's reopening a tram line in Croydon this afternoon after a fatal derailment last week. Seven people died when a tram overturned near Sandylands. Accident investigators say it was travelling too fast. Critics have described the debut episode of the Grand Tour as basically like Top Gear on steroids and one of the most exhilarating TV series ever. Jeremy Clarkson, James May and Richard Hammond are back, this time on Amazon Prime Video. James has told Talk Radio he's relieved it's been so well received. A part of me is always nervous about making TV because you know, I don't want to make a mess of it, but I've always felt quietly confident that we would be okay. Because we already knew that people, you know, there were a certain number of people who liked us, so it wasn't as if we were totally new to it, or the idea was totally new, a car show with three middle-aged blokes who muck things up a lot. It's, you know, the odds were good. And the weather, a breezy cold afternoon with sunny spells and showers in the western half of Britain. More snow might be seen in areas of Wales, Yorkshire, the Lake District and western parts of Scotland. Today's high just seven degrees. There's more news in half an hour. Across the UK, online and on DAB. Mid-mornings with Julia Hartley-Brewer. On Talk Radio, we'll get you talking. Uh, good afternoon. She is coming up to 12.34. This is Talk Radio. I'm Julia hartley Brewer. Thanks, as always, for your company. Uh, we've got the Friday panel in. Uh, Martin Daubney, journalist and men's issue campaigner. Simon Woolley, founder and director of Operation Black Vote. We've got an awful lot of stories to get through, Jen. So first up, uh, one of the major stories of the week, of course, front page news repeatedly this week, uh, was problems in our prisons with some 10,000 prison officers protesting over rising violence in jails. They were uh, at, well, did, they had staged a massive walkout. It's illegal for them to strike. The government went to the High Court, got an injunction, forcing them back to work. But their concerns really over safety for them and indeed for the uh, many people behind bars. Uh, Simon Woolley, um, mm. uh, do you, are you quite sort of uh, sympathetic to the prison officers and what they did? I am. And not just the prison officers, the whole, the whole prison system needs overhauling because we're locking far too many people up. Mm. They're disproportionately black. And when it comes to youth incarceration, the figures are through the roof. 40% 40% of youth incarceration are young black youths, African, Asian and Caribbeans. Something's going desperately wrong. You know, we're not uh, allowing people to, I guess, turn their lives around and be uh, active and productive citizens. It's often a revolving door uh, and something needs to be desperately done. Well, so this, this actually links in with another uh, subject today, which is a report by the Labour MP David Lammy. Uh, into, it was actually a government commission report commissioned by the former Prime Minister David Cameron uh, about uh, how ethnic minorities are treated in the criminal justice system. And I have to say, there were some really, really shocking figures uh, concerning yeah. treatment by the courts. And basically, for the same crime, right, uh, yeah. a, a black man or a white man or a black woman or a white woman, uh, they're far, far more likely to be sent to jail uh, than... And than for longer. White and for longer, um, but by, by a considerable margin. Here's the thing oh. about this, that Julia uh, Martin, that the black community are not surprised. Yeah, yeah this wasn't news to you. This wasn't yes. news, and it's not been news for a long time. Actually, there's similar data from the 1970s. What's really shocking is that the, the state, the government, and all those involved, lack of political will to one, acknowledge it, now it's been done, but two, to find solutions to turn this around. Because we're wasting, actually, this is the, the main point, we're wasting a generation of young talent. Do you think that fundamentally, now I'll come to Martin in just a moment, but uh, Simon, do you think that, I mean, certainly in terms of the issues of what's happening about ethnic minorities more likely to be jailed for some crimes, uh, that, that it is just out and out institutional racism? Is it, it bias on the part of yeah. the judges and magistrates? Or is there something else going on? Is there a more innocent explanation? Well, there are some, there are some nuances, but I mean, class is, is one of those nuances. Uh, but, you know, the fundamental... Working class people are more likely to be jailed than middle class and blacks are more likely Correct. to be working yes, class. Yes, but yeah. we, we, we mustn't ignore the race penalty 
society, for no other reason than the colour of your skin, the religion that you hold, you're being disproportionately treated badly. Um, Martin, I mean, on, on that issue in terms of, of colour, I know you would have seen that report. Yeah. Uh, and it, it made shocking reading to me. But again, were, were you surprised by that, that fact that was happening in 2016? Well, I'm a white guy, obviously, and I'm sort of one of these people. I, I sort of live in hope. I, I, I really hope that, that we aren't, you know, institutionally racist in the UK. And, and I hope it's for kind of things other you know other things such as you know previous convictions or you know their, their previous form or you know yeah i, I did look I, for I an innocent explanation I, yeah. I really hope this isn't racism and if it is then obviously that needs to be stamped out yeah. come on martin you know we've got to we've got to wake up and smell the coffee you have to see it as it is you know theresa may was bold enough when she went to the doors of downing street that she said that we're going to have to have these uh, reviews we're going to need to confront this and uncover these uncomfortable truths. Now, until we do so, until we're bold and Just brave face enough up to, it. to face up to you it. You can't solve it until you face up to it. And in terms of what's actually happening, regardless of the colour of the skin of the inmates, in terms of the prison officers, yeah. Martin, um, it, it, they've walked out. I've been speaking to Prison Officers Association mm. repeatedly the last few weeks about what's been going on, the, the extraordinary violence. I don't know about you, when I go to work every day, yeah. I don't expect someone to stab me, physically assault me. I'm not at risk of death, you know, unless I'm really rude to the producers about the quality of the tea. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but you know, but, I mean, we no joke about it. But this yeah. is what prison officers are dealing with. And of course, the, the fewer prison officers we have, uh, the less we are actually getting our, our prison population doing useful stuff, education, mm. uh, rehabilitation programs, working. We've been told for years they're supposed to be working behind bars. Clearly, they're not. Yeah, and here I, I totally concur with Simon. You know, we should be jailing less people. We should be looking at the root cause of why they're going to jail in the first place. You know, underlying issues of mental health, drug abuse alcohol addiction, violence, their field backgrounds, where do they come from? You know, they are disproportionately affected by, by social malaises, which end up putting them in jail. And then these, these people, frankly, are, are heroes. You know, I believe jail wardens are heroes, great unsung heroes of, of, of our society. And is it any great surprise that the a proportionate you know, decrease in their numbers is having a yeah. direct increase in violence? Quite simply, Bobby's on the beat, less crime, more prison wardens, less violent crime and also this tremendous problem we have with with legal highs getting into jails and drones you now you really feel that the prison officers are and wardens are sort of swimming against the tide and i think we should celebrate these guys and frankly when, when it was said in parliament the way this is an illegal strike i felt that was disgusting mm. these well, people the deserve... part of the contract is they're not allowed to strike but would you go to work if you're attacked every day it's not it's not like yeah. you know, well, being this a train is, driver this is the thing actually when we spoke to prison officer association this week finding out you know what are these guys earning or guys and girls you know what they're earning yeah, and, right. and they're starting on 18 grand yeah. now you know 18 it's 45k to drive a, a, a tube train in london mm. for goodness sake someone going to work and having the chance of actually someone uh, being violent towards them and again and, and, and this is one of the interesting things in terms of what what has changed it's not just the number of staff that's gone down dropped by 30 percent since 2010 entirely as a result of government policy absolutely mm. absurd policy uh, to cut the number of staff that are not replacing them and they can't retain people and even the announcement from this trust the justice secretary oh we'll have another two and a half thousand mm. that won't even cover the people who are going to be leaving the, uh, the, 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 uh, the profession mm -hmm. this year alone. But, but also the, the advent of new uh, drugs. They, they used to be called legal highs. They're yeah. not legal anymore, but they're very different from the cannabis that people used to be smoking, which, yeah. let's be honest, prison officers turned a blind eye to because it kept prisoners quiet. The drugs they're taking now aren't keeping them quiet. And, they're actually the turning them more of, violent. And the lack of policy around rehabilitation. Yeah. That, you know, here you've got a captive audience and you can either you can either bang them up and treat them, I guess, uh, much like animals, or you can say, look, the, they could be good citizens if we help them. Mm. Was it? I'm not sure the data, but there's a significant amount of prisoners that can barely read and write. Yeah. Uh, what chance do they have when they come out of these institutions to integrate into the wider world? And, and this is the issue, isn't it, in terms of uh, how, you know, what we actually do with prisoners when they come out. Uh, but Martin, I mean, let's get, let's get going back to the issue of, of ethnic minorities. And we're going to be talking in a few minutes about Alan Mil Milburn's social mobility report. Yep. We've talked about men's, you know, men being discriminated against in International Men's Day. We talked about ethnic minorities here, and, and Alan Milburn. We talked about the working class. These things tend to uh, that they almost sort of you know, yeah. combine into one, don't they? Amalgamate into one. I mean, do we do we just have some serious issues in this country yeah. in terms of? You 
you know, we are class ridden and race ridden and gender driven and, and that we are everyone has got an identity and everyone's being pigeonholed and mm. I, I just I, that wasn't that wasn't the country I thought I grew up in it wasn't the country I thought I lived in but increasingly it seems to be the case yeah I mean we in many ways seem to be seeing some kind of death of social mobility you know there is a feeling now that you are born poor you know you die poor and you are born into a poor community you do so and I've been doing a lot of work this year on what I call the boy crisis around you know, boys who are born into disadvantaged backgrounds, often in black communities, certainly in working class communities, such as where I was born, you know, never see a way out of that. And they are oftentimes growing up in households without fathers. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a there's a, a real issue around discipline. And of course, that's a prickly pair, because if we talk about the absence of fathers, it implies that we think single mothers can't do a great job. And so as a consequence, I think we are seeing the, the prison population are, are centres for dad deprived bo yeah. boys. Yeah. You, you know, see they, that again and again, don't you? Yeah. But again, isn't that interesting? See, as a woman, when someone says, you know, that children need to have fathers, I don't in any way take that as a, well, mums are useless. I'm a pretty strong mum. I'm probably mm. one of the strictest mums of the kids I know. Mm. And um, I, I, there is still nothing that works as well as <clears throat> from a dad. Mm. That, that you, mm. the, the father who can simply clear his throat <laughs> and suddenly the children get up, oh, I've got to do what I've got to do. I, I can see it with my daughter and I know I've got absolute respect and she, I get discipline from her. But, but it's a beautiful yin. thing to see. But sometimes it's just yin and yang. You know, yeah. you, you, yeah. you, play, you play as a team. Yeah. Uh, and so one, it's your turn to be the... Uh, there you go, the yeah. bad cop. Mm. Well, I did, last but, Saturday night, my daughter's 10th birthday, we had a bunch of kids stay the night, far too many, six of them for goodness sake. What was I thinking? <laughs> we, we, we hold up in the, in the spare room. We just hid away, locked all the doors in between. Brave having it it very brave. Yeah, I know. What was I thinking? Yeah, we're still clearing up. Um, but but genuinely, it was every every sort of twenty minutes, one of us went adventure. Went no, it's your turn. I've I've been bad cop for the last three. Your turn to go in and do the serious. Lights off. No more noise. No more giggling. And it worked. It and he was. came back. He said, was that good? I went, yeah, it was so great. Families right? are important. The families are important, and communities yeah. are important yeah. because you know you may have a single parent, mother or father, just bringing up the kids. But if you have a sense of community, yeah. Uh, yeah. relatives, friends, neighbours uh, that can help out with the with the I guess the nurturing um, the nurturing of our next generation I worked on a scheme um, called the young men's collective in New York because in New York and, and the surrounding areas you know the worst performers at school are young black boys and they they solve this problem by simply recruiting more people like them from right. the communities yeah. you know p teachers of color no, people that you can identify like, with oh he's yeah. from the same community as me he I, gets I, me. I respect him yeah. i will look to him as a role model therefore i'm engaged with education and there's less chance of these mm. kids ending up in jail and let's start at the beginning and build better boys so we have healthier men yeah absolutely i have to say you know that's, that's this the thing if you want your your daughter to turn out well you want your son to turn out well they need to be seeing what it's like what 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 what, what is the role model of a, of a good man and a good woman uh, we're going to talk about uh, that that, uh, that social mobility report we just touched on uh, from uh, um, alan milburn of course the former health secretary they talked about the treadmill families going nowhere and the really saddest thing that came out of that was the idea that uh, so few of us think that you can get where you want in life and make an achievement for yourself uh, simply from your own hard work and your your, your own skills and not necessarily from how much your parents earned or your background uh, we're going to talk about that we're also going to be talking about the under fives who apparently are glued to screens with a tv or computer screens for four hours every day we'll talk about all that next uh, with our friday panel uh, coming up after an update on the travel do stay tuned this is talk radio across the uk online and on dab access all radios talk radio give it some lip Introducing the Sun's three-step mortgage repayment plan. One, pick up the Sun. Two, collect ten tokens from inside the paper. Three, win a hundred thousand pounds cash. That's three small steps for you, one giant leap to paying off your mortgage. Starts this weekend, part of the Sun's great giveaway. Hey, terms and conditions apply. Just can't wait for Black Friday. At Argos, our Black Friday event is now on with thousands of amazing deals. Plus, with our buy now price promise, these offers won't go lower on Black Friday at Argos or we'll refund the difference. Go Argos. End 30th of November. Terms and conditions apply. See online for details. If you're thinking of selling your car, here's a list of things you'll probably want to avoid. Paying to advertise it. Taking loads of calls from interested people who have no intention of buying your car. Waiting in for strangers to turn up and look at your car. Waiting in for strangers to not turn up and look at your car. Listening to someone tell you how they saw a better one earlier on. Had enough? Sell your car without any hassle. Enter your reg number now at webuyanycar.com. Terms and conditions apply. See webuyanycar.com info. 
If you've been refused a loan, why not ask someone to be your guarantor for an Amigo loan? Because the moment you do, amazing things can happen. You can change an old car into a new one. Transform a spare room into a nursery fit for a princess. Turn a great business idea into a great business. And most amazingly of all, you could start to improve your credit rating. To borrow up to £7,500 at representative 49.9% APR variable, all you need is a guarantor with a good credit history to make your payments if you don't. You must be over 18, not bankrupt, and able to afford the repayments. It's good to have an Amigo. Apply now at amigoloans.co.uk. This is a live update for UK businesses. Every day, millions of consumers are shopping online for quality UK goods. And right now, some of the world's leading online marketplaces have reduced selling costs for UK businesses. To enjoy these exclusive discounts and to find the right online marketplace for you, search Exporting is Great. Have you seen my keys anywhere? Uh, are they in the dining room? No. Nope. Drawing room? No. Nope. Library? No. Nope. Indoor pool? No. Nope. Outdoor pool? No. Nope. Tennis courts? Ah, nicer problems to have. Euro Millions is now even better with huge jackpots and two guaranteed UK millionaires in every draw. Only from the National Lottery. Rules and procedures apply. Players must be 16 or over. Talk Radio, traffic and travel. Well, on the M1 northbound at the moment through South Yorkshire, two lanes are blocked due to a serious multi-vehicle accident. That's on the M1 northbound between Junction 31 and Junction 32. It's affecting traffic, travelling from Balborough towards uh, Sheffield at the moment. Also, the M42 through Worcestershire. If you're going northbound between Junction 3 and 3A, it's looking heavy through that stretch. The M6 southbound through Greater Manchester, one lane remains closed off due to an accident between Junction 26 and 25. I'm Poonam Verma. Whiskey, how do you have yours? On the rocks, on the sofa, by a roaring fire, with your feet up, at an office party, at a family party, a glass for Grandad, a glass for Santa, a glass for you. This Christmas, Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey is just £18 at your local co-op. 70CL participating stores only subject to availability end 6th of December 18 plus. Please drink responsibly. Drinkaware.co.uk Across the UK, online and on DAB. Late night, Ian Lee. Tonight from 10 on Talk Radio. A differently interesting nocturnal emissions from a legend of late night radio. My name's Ian Lee. I'm on at 10 o'clock at night. We're going to have singers. We're going to have dancers. We're going to have naked pets. Just listen and see what happens. Late night conversation. Well, losing sleep over late night Ian Lee on air and off the leash tonight from 10 on talk radio we'll get you talking mid mornings with Julia Hartley Brewer the ladies not for turning off on talk radio we have ways of making you talk we certainly do have ways to make you talk, especially if you're invited on our Friday panel. Uh, uh, Martin Dorkney, journalist and men's issue campaigner, and Simon Woolley, founder and director of Operation Blackboard, are here in the studio with me. Uh, coming up very soon, John Holmes will be here to tell you what's happening on his show from one o'clock. Two more topics I want to talk about in terms of the week's news. We mentioned this earlier, the social mobility report. Um, I must come to you on, on, on this first, Martin. Um, mm. uh, social Mobility Commission uh, that, that's led by uh, Sir Alan Milburn, uh, a working class lad himself who made it into the cabinet but as he said you know he's one of the exceptions that actually so many families are what they call the treadmill families they're going nowhere low income and they're being held back and actually they did a survey and an awful lot of people in this country think that actually getting on in life is down to who your parents are and how much money you've got and not your own talent or hard work it's pretty depressing reading I, I think actually this is the burning issue of our time you know the fact that you are two-thirds of people in Britain believe that if you are born poor you die poor there's no way out there's a death of social mobility you know, this can bring down give Governments. You know, we saw with Brexit, you know, Brexit almost directly reflects this. You know, those who are the most discontent, who felt the most abandoned by the system, the most despised almost, look for scapegoats. And it creates this political chasm for the right wing to fill. The left wing, for many times, the Labour Party, the party of my father, coal miner, you know, no longer speak to the working man. And it allows this kind of melting pot to, to bubble over. And I think we need to deal with this. It happened in America, the Rust Belt, yeah. all of those white people that just kind of became bigoted or in the minds of, of, of Trump supporters. 
and you know we need to do something about this. We need to help the most dispossessed. Is there, is there a little bit of excuse making by people that well I've not gone I've not done well in life it is because because I didn't get the start other people had and, and actually an awful lot of doing well in life is actually down to hard work and and turning up every day and taking risks and like and I, I accept it's down slightly easier to do that if you're born in a, a professional middle class family with all the advantages and the knowledge that that that, that comes with uh, but I, I keep meeting people who, like like Martin like yourself my husband my parents who who were the exceptions to this rule that you can't escape for want of a better phrase at the working class but I keep meeting thousands of people who do but that's the point we, we mustn't have exceptions to the rule yeah we, we must have it as the norm you know there was a program on Sunday with David Harewood the Hollywood actor mm. uh, will we have a black prime minister it was a fascinating program and the chances are kind of a gazillion to one to be a black a black prime minister but the the data that shocked me was is that there are five fee paying schools that are the biggest contributors to Oxbridge in comparison to mm. 1,700 state schools. And what is that? T what, what lesson do you get from that? That privilege and elitism is in the DNA of this country. Well, no, but wait, 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 wait. Why is that privilege? Why could that not be that those state schools are utterly failing the, well, the children who are, well, who are well, at those schools? And maybe those parents yeah. are failing the children Julia, at those schools. 1,700 1, in comparison to five. There are are not, there's a failing school I, near my near my home. I wouldn't send my daughter to the local comp if you paid me. This is this is another reality check where we have to see it for what it is. Is that the privilege is writ large, mm -hmm. and people are given are given attention, money, and all the privileges that ensure that actually when you look at the cabinet, yeah. they all come from these either the schools and or Oxford. Here's the big point about it: our talent pool is huge. Yeah. So but we're right, not using all we're of it. Using it. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's fair. And Martin, you're nodding. Yeah, well, look, I, I've done work this year on the most disadvantaged kids at school in this country, and so often we found that their parents had a terrible time at school. Yeah. Their parents are disengaged from the whole system at the outset. It was in just fact, something they had to do. It wasn't yeah. something that was encouraged. And they pass that bad message on. They discourage their children from climbing the ladder because they had a bad time. So we need to engage parents and communities too. Well, indeed, actually, that brings us on to our final topic uh, in this hour, and that is the parenting. I've got big issues on this. A uh, new, uh, new study is actually Ofcom's, uh, the broadcasting watchdog, uh, did a survey of parents and, and, and of children in screen time. Absolutely shocking that even preschool children are online uh, sometimes for up to four hours each day. I find this absolutely extraordinary. My daughter certainly didn't look at anything online before she went to school. Uh, before the age of two, I don't think she saw television. Um, we are in danger of, of just having gadget glued children children who never even leave the, 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 the house, aren't we, Simon? No, we are. And we talked about our children, our beautiful children, as a matter of... We've been showing each other pictures. <laughs> as, a, as a matter of fact. But I think, you know, what the, 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 the thread that runs through both our bringing up our children has actually been sport. It is critical to mm. get your kids out the house. Yeah. I mean, you know, back in the day, it was easy. You was out roaming the streets or in the fields. Well, we were told to get out of the house, weren't out. we? <laughs> Don't but come back till six exactly. o'clock. <laughs> 2016 is that your kid can wake up on the small screen, on another screen, on a big screen. And it is it is the parents. It is the parents, first and foremost, that have to say to themselves, this is no good for the kid. This is no good for the family and absolutely no good for society. And, and again, it's not so much a child being what they're doing on screen or what they're looking at or what they're playing. It's what they're not doing, isn't it, Martin? Yeah, but it's about bad. Balance. I was at this guy the other night, this really smart behavioural psychologist who said when the trains were first invented, there were all these theories that trains were going to kill us. <laughs> and I think with every new technology, it's like it's, it's the end. There's no way back. And I just think, look, they can have a bit of iPad time if they're doing something smart. I play with my iPad with my kid, you know, with my son, but also get them out. I, I don't oh, think... Yeah, I didn't enjoy what you said. You, you play with the iPad with your son. And yeah. that's the difference, isn't it? It's as opposed to a parent going, oh, here you go. Here's yeah, my phone. He, I mean, and then just not having to speak to them for two hours. Yeah, they call it the the i nanny, don't they? Now it's like here's the iPad. You know, you sit there and I'm gonna have a few pints of beer and watch. I mean, you see that loads, don't you? It, it is it is now a pacifier. It, it's a 21st century dummy. I have to say, when I I, I walk uh, up the street and I see uh, kids in their in their buggies with their parents, really young kids, and and I can I, I reckon I could tell you right now. I mean, statistic. I bet we could do is and tell you what what grades at GCSE those kids are gonna <laughs> get. But whether there's a child who's sitting there with a little a little book. And they're just looking at you know, shapes and 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 and, uh, and you know felt and and whatever and foil colour things, or whether a child is sitting there with their mum's iPhone. Um, because the funny thing is, I think those parents think they're doing a really good thing for their kids, but the, but actually, I think the statistics are going to bear out that they're not. Yeah, my wife is the one who does the kind of colouring in the sort of T-shirt for children in need today, and I was like playing Heyday on the iPad with my boys. So you know, yeah. my wife is much better than me, but I I I think we shouldn't beat ourselves no. up too much so long as we You're have. You're allowed some a little bit of time, yeah. Well, as my husband always says, so when I've, I've walked in on him. And my daughter sitting 
sitting there with playing some some paints and sequins or something involving horses. And I said, what are you doing? He goes, my two favourite things, horses and creative play. The look on his face said something different. <laughs> uh, my wonderful Friday panels, Martin Daubney, journalist of Men's Issue Campaigner, Simon Woolley, founder and director of Operation Black Vote. Thank you so much for joining us here at Talk Radio. Really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for coming in.